Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking with me. This has been an interesting uh, last six months or so since I've started this channel. It's been a really different way of interacting with people explaining mediumship other than just normally what I would do, which would be to write and do lectures, podcasts, and so, so on. This has been very interesting for me. I think I'm seeing things in a lot different ways different way it's it's clear i have the audience that's you you all out there who reach out to me and leave comments your insight is really valuable and then the posts i get in social media as well they're it's mediumship is this whole world is it's just in some ways it's very simple simple with understanding the harm and the the vulnerable people who are this is happening to in other ways it's very complex and the word play and the way people are manipulated you really have to pay good close attention to the words that are used because it's there's a lot going on there a lot more than what we hear what we we think we hear and what is really said, it is it is fascinating. If I was to go back to school, <laughs> I would love to get a degree in social psychology and understand this a lot more. But here we are together. And I appreciate the comments I'm getting and the messages I'm getting on social media, as well as emails from you all. If you want to contact me, you can reach out to me on Facebook on Messenger. Make sure you have the right Susan Gerbic. I do have a cousin who is also a Susan Gerbic. I can't imagine what she thinks of the posts she must be getting in the private messages, but make sure it's me. And also my email is susangerbic at gmail.com is another way of getting hold of me. I will get back to you as quickly as I can and also on the comments in the channel. I appreciate that a lot. I'm also getting ready for conference season. I'm going to be all over the world um, starting in a couple of weeks. Oh, gosh, less than two weeks. In like a week and a day, I'm going to be on a, on a flight. So I'll, I'll do what I can to keep up with videos and keep in touch. And I'll be doing a lot of lectures on um, this, this uh, world that we find ourselves in. The video you're going to see right now is I think seven minutes long. I have blurred the the woman. It's always a woman, right? I've blurred her out, but I've left her voice in. Um, I'm going to not reveal her name, except she reveals her name. It's Angela. And I won't reveal her last name. And it's Thomas John. So I recorded, well, I was in one of his gallery readings, as I tend to do. I or one of my team members. And this was in September the 26th of 2023. And we recorded and we have a whole, oh my gosh, there's so many uh, of these out there. Uh, and I'm going to, I don't know, we'll see how far I get through these things. This is my second video from this actual reading. And I did a video two weeks ago it was called psychic exploits a vulnerable woman's grief and that one was just so horrible because i mean horrible to to watch because the woman was so in grief and oh my gosh you guys it just it just it hits in your heart you you can't but just feel the the grief and the pain that these people are going through uh, tonight, this one that I'm going to show you is another version of that. This is a woman who is um, in extreme grief. I mean, well, you'll see as best you can. You'll be able to hear it and you'll be able to sort of see her a little bit. But this is from that same time. In this one, what I'd like you to look for is how many questions Thomas John asks. Because he asks a lot and I, I haven't been keeping track but as I'm going through the video I can see I can say that's another question and that's another question oh that's interesting and that's another question and that's another question and the the sitter 
who is very, very motivated, because she badly would like to have this reading, she is um, giving up a lot of information. And so it's very easy for him. Some of the comments I get in the channel, and I've heard for the last few years, is people will say, well, he knows things that she couldn't, you know, that there was no way of knowing. And how can he do all this information, all this looking up all over Facebook for every little bit of information he gives these people? Okay, well, he what he's doing is he's he's actually learning very little about them ahead of time. And I really want you to pay attention to this because this is this is a good example of that. He has um he knows who's going to be at the event because it's a gallery event. They pay ahead of time, right? So they register. You have to register and you pay with a credit card or PayPal. So it has your name on there. Um, a lot of these women, what they'll do is they will post on his social media saying that they will be attending. And so if they say that, then their name is right there with their uh, social media. Usually it's Facebook and you just click on their Facebook account and you can find information in there. I've showed you guys many times how you can use a search feature or you can look at the URL for the person and get their full name. A lot of times it's their maiden name is in there as well which means it opens up all to the, you know, the person's uh, married life as well as their, um, you know, father and mother. Also in the photographs, there's a lot of people who are commenting about photographs. People put up, put up old photographs that will be like family pictures for anniversaries, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Veterans Day, so on. And the friends that they have, that will allow them to be able to, you can link to them because they'll comment. And, and if they have the same last name, you can assume it's probably relation. Or if they say something like, Hey sis, you know, here's, here's what I'm thinking about this. And, and this, and now you know that that Facebook account is a sister. Okay. In this particular case, the woman has um, an unusual last name, but her first name is Angela. Very common. So I thought to myself, is it, how hard is it to Google her, just Angela and her last name? And what will I find? Will I find the right person? And so what I did, and this is just, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding you guys. It just takes a couple minutes. I Googled her first and last name in italics. I'm not italics, but with quotes around it. So it'll only search for what's there. And it pulled up her first name, her last name, and then it uh, had a lot of different links to things that she's done. And I thought, well, is this the right person or not? Well, there's images. And in this video, you can see, well, you can't see because I've blurred it out. She has this very specific kind of ring. And so in some of the pictures that I found on um, in this Google search, it shows that ring. And so you can, you know, you can assume it's the same woman and, and it looks like her and her glasses and everything's, you know, it's obviously it's her. But then I said, okay, well, how do I really know? And I put in the word obituary because she's not dead, but she may be mentioned in an obituary. And there we are. I'm right there. It says it pulls up an obituary for somebody who died a month and a couple days before this reading. And in that obituary, it is everything. It, it describes her boyfriend in, and his family members, his life, what kind of person he was. I'm not going to go into great detail because this is a, a man who had a long history of life and wealth and um, activities, very active very active man, professional man, intelligent man. Um, and his family members are mentioned in there and her, she's mentioned right off as a life partner. And then, okay, so that came up. And then also in that search, and I'm telling you all this now, because I want you to listen for this in the video uh, that I'm going to show you. And then as I'm 
as I'm, you know, those are the first hits. So like it gives you your Instagram, her Facebook page. Um, and, uh, you know, when you put in the word obituary, then it pulls up the obituary for her, her boyfriend who has died um, less than 30 days ago, maybe 33 days ago. And then, you know, hit, 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 hit. And Google yourself and you will see what I mean. There are these search engines out there or these websites that you can subscribe to. And what they'll do is they'll look for your addresses, your phone numbers. It'll look if you've had previous um, altercations with the law or, you know, it'll it'll give you addresses and and names of people associated with you. So in this case, that's exactly what happened. It Her name came up and then also a bunch of other names with the same last name. And it gave me a street address. I mean, the number and the street and the zip code in the city, the full address of this person and all the names of people who were associated with that, with that address. So they may not, might've been her childhood home. I don't know. It could, it could have been, um, it's hard to say, but anyway, the names underneath that have the same last name as hers. And the names are Angela, which is her, Ronald, Matilda, Teresa. And then there was like dot, 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 like I'd have to click on it and it would pull up and then it'd probably want me to pay some money or something. But this is just the search, just this like three lines. Um, so just in that, I got her address of where she probably grew up because it's associated with these other people's names with the same last name as hers. And then these other names. Now, I don't know how they're related to each other. I just see these names. But Thomas Tan, when he calls on this woman, and what he does is he, he throws out a bunch of names and he sees who will hit on it. And the this woman was one of two. Another woman I cut out of this part of the video. She's, she says, oh, that could be my brother. And blah, blah, blah. you know, she says those names are associated with me. And then he says, oh, okay, well, I think somebody else said so. And then you hear Angela say, that's me. And then he goes, oh, yeah, is it you? And she says, that's me. And she starts telling you how these names, Matilda, Ronald, are related to her. She's, you know, she'll, and I'll show you what she says. Now, Thomas Don knows he's going to go to her. He knows already. I've seen so many of his readings. And he does this a lot where he'll throw out a bunch of names and see who will hit on. And he'll play people off each other. Like, hmm, could it be you? Mm, I'm not so sure. Maybe it's you. Uh, maybe it's not. And back and forth, back and forth. And then he'll settle on somebody. Now, why he does that, I don't know. It takes up time. It makes, uh, you know, when you're, you have, you have to fill time. And also maybe it gives this other person some hope and the feeling that they got called on, or maybe it's just to manipulate people. I, I don't really know why he does that, but he just does that a lot. And you can look at some of my videos and you can see, see this interaction happening. It's just his style for whatever reason. And then when he does that, he's, he'll say, so is this your person? Or is this make sense to you? And he knows already he's going to her. He knew that before he started throwing out all those names. He knew that because he'd already Googled her or somebody close to him. Thomas John has Googled her because remember they're on a gallery screen with there's like a hundred people there. And he, he knows who's going to be there because they bought a ticket. So, you know, spend a few minutes ahead of the, ahead of the game. You're there like, okay, so this person's going to be here. Let's Google them. Make a few notes. Okay. This person's going to be there. Google them. And, and, you know, you get maybe eight people, maybe 10 people. And then when they appear on the screen, all he has to do is look through the gallery name, say, yep, there she is. Okay. She's going to be in my second one. And then, oh, I think my fourth, re third reading is going to be this person over here. Um, this one's a really good one. I'm going to make them first. You know, you just go through it like that. You could have a piece of paper and have just jotted down on here. You could say their name, 
And then you would just put a few things like in his case, he's only going to mention these people's names and they're never really going to appear again. She's going to give him all the information. But the main hit he has is her boyfriend. Now, he doesn't mention the boyfriend's name and I'm not going to mention the boyfriend's name. But it doesn't matter because he already it's not like um, the cold reading group that never mentions the full name because they don't have it. Thomas John knows this man's full name. He knows his birthday. He knows what he died of. He knows where he lived. I know that too, because he came up in a couple minutes of a Google search. So um, then he just rides it out. So really listen carefully to this reading. I know, I'm sorry, I'm going on way too long here, but I will, uh, <laughs> it's just my way. I'm sorry, you guys. I get so in, wrapped up in explaining things. And so when you're listening to this, listen to how much content Thomas Don has and how most of what he's saying, he's just playing off of um, what the woman says, what Angela says. He, he just reads off of it. So let's pull that up. Remember that Thomas John already knows who he's going to call on. And he has these brief mentions of her name already. He already knows what he's going to say. And then he's going to write it out for eight minutes. And he's going to let her just get do most of the work. I'll interrupt a couple times because I really want to make sure that you uh, catch everything that is going on. And if I miss something or you think I'm not quite right, please leave it in the comments. I really enjoy your perspective of what's going on. But do keep track here. I'm going to grab myself a pencil, a pencil and a piece of paper. And I'm going to keep track, if I can, how many questions, actual questions he asks, I'm just curious because some psychics do, you know, like 50 questions or something like that. It feels like since I've reviewed this a few times, there's probably 10 or more, but I don't know. Let's, let's see what you guys come up with. Um, somebody else. Says and... <laughs> yes. Angela. Yes. Angela. It's Angela. Mm -hmm. uh, like... Yes. My father, Ronald has passed away and my mother is Teresa and my grandmother is Matilda. Okay, so I'm going to say for me, it's a little bit more of a, a hit for you. And Angela, um, do you have somebody that just died in the last few months? Yes. Okay, so is that separate from who I'm talking about? Like, I know we're talking about um, your parents possibly coming through, but there's yes. also reference to a more recent passing. So did you, you lose somebody more recently? Yes. Like in the last month or so. Okay. Yes. And is that different from your, would that be different from your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is that different from your parents? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and your parents are both passed over? No, my, my father's passed away and my grandmother's passed away and my mother is alive. Gotcha. And who did you, who did you recently lose? Your boyfriend? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And was he quite a bit older than you? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm just, you know, it was confusing me and I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. I couldn't tell if I was picking up on your dad or your boyfriend because I felt. <laughs> They're probably a, hanging out together right now. <laughs> yeah. When did you lose your dad? In um, 2010. So he knew. Okay. I'm already up to seven questions. And one of them was almost a repeat because he said, is that your, is this different from your parents? And she's like, yes. And then he kind of rephrased it. So this is different from the, from the, your normal parents. I, I, I think he rephrased it. Another thing he said is, like I said, if, if Thomas John is coming into this with just like on that Google search and he just pulls up that little something like that that says an address and then it has a bunch of people's names after hers and they all have the same last name as if these are people associated with the address and they come up with Angela, Ronald, Matilda, and Teresa. That's what I saw. That is exactly what I saw on that line 
and then it was like dot 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 I'd have to go and click on it and get a subscription or whatever and then it would give me more information about these people but it doesn't tell me how they're related to each other it just tells me that these people are associated with each other at this address and you can see that their last names are the same it even gives their middle names too so it really wouldn't be a problem finding them on a google search so angela ronald Teresa and matilda those are all names that thomas john just mentioned and those are exactly the names that i pulled off of that url in a google search of just angela blank's last name so she put together all the um, associations she said my dad's name is ronald my mom's name is Teresa, and my grandma's name is matilda and on that search, it had Matilda's last name is the same as the other. So we know it's a paternal grandmother if Thomas John wanted to mention it. So that's that's really all he has to know. Also, remember in that Google search, it came up with her boyfriend's name and his obituary. And yes, he is quite a bit older than her. It, uh, it gives a list of, uh, you know, names his birthday. So he was, you know, older. I don't. I don't want to say because I don't want you to be able to figure out who this person is so easily. The thing that I just paused on, I'm going to back it up just a slight amount because I've listened to this a few times and I'm really curious because I think Thomas John says, how did your father die? I'm almost positive he says that. But she responds, he died in 2010. So he's asking, how did your father die? And she says he died in 2010. So I think she's mishearing either that or I'm mishearing. <laughs> so I'm going to play this back. It's just a few seconds. And I want you to um, tell me what you think, because it's just odd how, how he says this. All right. So let's try that again. I'm just going to play those few seconds. And, and I'm still keeping track of what it is, how many questions we have here. Uh, in 2010. Oops. So he back. knew your boyfriend? I didn't go back far enough. I'm just, you know, it was confusing me, and I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. I couldn't tell if I was picking up on your dad or your boyfriend, because I felt... <laughs> They're that probably was... hanging out together right now. <laughs> yeah. When did you lose your dad? Uh, in 2010. So he knew your boyfriend? Again tell if i was picking up on your dad or your boyfriend because i felt <laughs> they're probably was... hanging out together right now <laughs> yeah. when did you lose your dad on uh, 2010 so he knew your boyfriend yes okay yeah because they almost, he loved him. not in a weird way but they almost have like a similar energy to me like they kind of have a similar way of doing things almost does that make sense to very you? much yeah he um he, he really uh, liked my dad, and, and when we would visit, he would um, go to uh, this lunch that my dad had with all of his other friends, and my dad referred to him as the younger guy mm -hmm. because he was older, but younger than them. <laughs> okay. Older uh, than me, younger than them. Right. And your, your boyfriend who passed, um, <laughs> your boyfriend who passed, um, yeah. Um, he is, um, your, your boyfriend who passed, um, very intelligent man, correct? Very. Okay. Um, he's telling me that a lot of weird stuff has happened since he's died. Um, yeah. a lot of people that are not actually good people that are around you that you're trying to discern, is that a good person or a bad person? Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. Um, because I'm, I'm feeling that you are in a place of like, you, you can't really tell, you know, cause you're mourning and stuff too. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, now, who are these people, Angela? Are these people that are, were connected They're, to him? His family. Kind of weird. It just, I don't know. It's weird. They're, his, his brothers, the trustee and the niece and the two nephews and it's it's really it's really horrible here it's for me it's really right now. weird yeah because i'm i'm like i'm like they're not they're not i don't good feel people yeah they're not good people and they're not really doing right by you and they're right. not 
Um, greedy. Yeah, it's very, very, very greedy. Um, and they're just, I feel like they're not kind and I just feel like they're not, um, and they, you know, they know how much he cared about you. They know that you were a bit, you know, essentially his wife. Um, yeah. and they just, it's almost like they want to just let's sell everything. Let's get rid of everything. Let's leave Angela in the streets. We don't care. That's um, exactly what's happening right now. Mm-hmm, yeah. Cause your boyfriend's telling me this. So your boyfriend is saying that, um, and what were you not protected correctly? This was not set up legally correctly. Um, I do understand now that he gave me life residency in his building and because he had done another project, he, um, had to put up the building for sale. And I, I understand just. Uh, that he had to remove me as a life resident because he had to sell the building in order to um, cover his debt. And like eight hours before he died, I told him it's done and it's okay. You don't owe anybody anything anymore. And I think my friend Marie helped me um, that night. He was confused. She told me that he came to him and that he was confused. He didn't, I don't think he really thought that there there was going to be anything else besides a void. And so he was very surprised and happy. And that she told me to light a white candle and put a glass of water next to it, which I did at my mom's. And then she told me that, okay, he's gone. But I, I took care of him for five months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he was sick because I didn't want him to be by himself. So I, mean, I feel like so horrible to me right now. Yeah, I feel like there is a feeling of just you know, especially because a lot of this happens so quickly. You know. Okay, good place to stop right there. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this woman is in is in grief. She's in extreme grief. It is super recent. Um, I don't think it's healthy for her to be contacting a medium whatever i she's an adult she can contact a medium if she wants to if she thinks it'll really help her sounds like she's contacted more than one medium because her friend marie i don't know that whole thing was a little confusing told her to get a white candle and put a glass of water next to it i don't so it sounds like she's already had somebody giving her some kind of wooey kind of thing and here she is trying to deal with the stress now one of the reasons why i don't really want you guys to be able to find this woman is because i think that when somebody has died especially when you are not legally married to them and have rights in that way that there is this sense of the family especially when there's a lot of wealth there's this sense of the family having to say well sorry you weren't married to her i guess you i you know you guys weren't ma- actually married so you know we're gonna you're out of here you know that kind of thing or you know here's some here's some of the shoes or something you know not like a not like she's gonna get property or or whatever they're gonna say well that was my uncle or that was my brother so family dynamics plus it's only been a month so things that she think she knows is about rights and property and stuff like that may not be may not be completely clear yet because we don't know but we do know that she says her, her his brother is the trustee so he's probably the one who handled the obituary and i read the obituary and she is the first person mentioned as a life partner so they didn't forget her i have seen cases where people will be a long-term um living with the person and then they're left completely out of the obituary i've seen that happen so in this case she is mentioned so i don't want to get into the family dynamics here all i know is this woman is really um, in pain she's really grieving Um, it is it is stressful because we're dealing with um, a powerful man and he has a powerful family who has feel it feels like they have every legal right 
to the property and so on. He owned a building. She's living in the building. And I guess he, she was supposed to live there until, she, you know, for her entire life. And then he sells the building and then he had to take that off. And then it just got a little confusing there, you guys. This is probably my fourth or fifth time listening to this and I'm still confused. All right. Thomas Don said it was really quick, but it wasn't quick. So I don't know why he didn't get that because she comes out right now and she says, I took care of him his last five months. And then the obituary says it was, it was, um, it was a cancer and it, it wasn't like, you know, quick or anything like that. Well, I guess it depends on what you mean by quick. All right. So let's go back to this over here. He's still keeping track of the, how many times he asked the question. Oh, I wanted to say this. Wait, wait. Remember what you, you and I are watching right now is speaker view on zoom so when she speaks her picture is the main picture when he speaks his picture is the main picture but what is happening in reality is that it's a gallery and i know because i was there whenever this reading was done it's gallery so it's got multiple pictures on the screen so um he possibly what he does is he pins her so like whenever he calls on her and he decides she's going to be the person that is going to be his his person he probably pins her so he can look at her but he's able to look at her the entire time so he can see her emotions he can see um, if she's, she looks confused like that didn't make sense or if she's you know her uh, she's about to have a you know, complete emotional, um, you know, just really have a lot of emotion come out of her right away. He can watch her, you know, he just can, he can see her the whole time. But so what I'm trying to say is that because we can't see what's going on the entire time, we can only see when she says something and then she pops on the screen, but she can see, he can see her the entire time. So that helps him read um, her emotions and to know kind of where to go on on things that he says so i just want to throw that out there that what we're seeing right now is not what he sees when he's actually giving the reading so sorry i just had to make that crystal clear oh i feel like and i don't i think that this is a man you know even though he was older i see him <clears throat> you know, full of life and full of joy. Hey. And, and and I don't know that he really thought about death a lot, you know, so this was kind of like, it's almost like, wow, he's got to deal with this now. Um, so he's, he's coming to terms with things and he's, he's, he's learning and things and stuff. And are you moving? Are you moving? So up? since I've gotten back from, since I've gotten back from Los Angeles, I've done nothing but just try to pack things pack things up and put things in boxes. I recently broke my ankle. And then while I was trying to clean out one of the rooms, I, I leaned forward in the window and broke a rib. So this is like, um, I've been talking to him every night, mm -hmm. lighting that white candle and talking to him every night. Yeah. Sorry, I'm so, I I, him so much. I that, you know, um, I, obviously you're, you know, grieving a lot. So I think the main thing is, is, what spirit is saying is just it's it's important right now to just um take one day at a time you know you're doing you know i feel like you have so many things to worry about and animals and where you're going and things like this um and i do you always told me to breathe just breathe just breathe it's more like you have to take a break you know you have to take a break you just have to kind of get things in perspective but i do see things being okay and i do feel that you know things are going to um get where they need to be and stuff so yeah i think that you're on a path where uh, you you know and i know spirit is trying to help you and stuff i mean i always i just did a TikTok video about this of course you know people will ask that i'm not saying that you are but that's a question that people will ask i'll put you on mute because i'm going to move on to somebody else but people will ask that well my loved one died and well why can't they help you know well you know uh, just because somebody dies they're not like an all-powerful being right you know they they um you know um i had a client this morning who you know her father died and the, the sister is like 
being a total bitch and like taking all the money and stuff. And, um, you know, the, she's like, I just don't get why my dad won't intervene. Well, they can't always, you know, they can't, because we don't know the free will of that person. We don't know the karma, you know, so we always have to remember that. Okay. Wisdom from Thomas Tarn. <laughs> Gosh, I like how he was just kind of unemotional, like he was over it. And if you watch the other video I made that is called Psychic Exploits Vulnerable Woman's Grief. And it was just two weeks ago. So you can look back on my playlist. You'll see the same kind of interaction where he's just kind of like over it. You know, he's like, okay, I've done my thing. Why are you still talking? I'm ready to move on to the next person. It's not very personable. You know, I, I don't. I, I don't think I'd want to go see a psychic like that, but I guess some people think that that he's the real deal because he's getting real names and he's getting real details because he's looking them up, but you know they don't know that. And it doesn't occur to them that the psychic would, would do something like that. That's manipulate a grieving woman. I mean, why? Nobody would do that. Why? Why would they do that? I mean, seriously, this is the kind of things I get from people. They can't, they can't believe that somebody would take advantage of them. And she's, she's, you can't really see, but she is extremely upset. And on her Instagram and her Facebook page, she has lots of animals on there. Lots and lots. And she works in a profession that deals with animals. And they're all over her page. And at one point, she picks up the most adorable kitten and she holds it to herself. And it just, the kitten just looks at the screen like, what the heck? <laughs> it's adorable. It's really a beautiful kitten. So when he mentions animals, you've got a lot of pets and animals to deal with or whatever he says. It's because it's all over her Facebook page and her Instagram page. And plus she had just picked up a kitten and she was holding it. Um other things that are going on oh i forgot to keep track of it. if there was any more questions i lost track i got to 11 Ooh, i went to 11 and that's where i lost track i hope somebody else has some more has uh, kept track better than i did and <laughs> let me know um so to sum up this was painful i don't know if it's painful to you it was painful to me to have to watch like however many times i've watched it he it's just another example of somebody who has he's googled come up with like just a few things just jotted them down it, it all he has to do is just say the names of ronald matilda Teresa. is this your family members and she says yes this is them and she just explains how they all are related to each other and she starts telling the story of how uh, you know her father and her boyfriend used to go to these events together and how there's a candle and she's trying to move and she broke her rib and she broke her ankle and you know and she's stressed the woman is stressed out literally it has been a month and probably his family's telling her we're selling the building you gotta go and she just thinks they're just cruel probably and she's very upset so now like i said it's new we don't know what's actually going on the family may be trying to make other arrangements for her or they're trying to um you know figure out what their liability is with her you know what is the final things they have to do you know how just it's it's um probably very complicated her emotions are very raw and she's thinks she's talking to this um, loved boyfriend of hers and so she is just overwhelmed um, it's not her fault for um, it is her fault to have come to mediumship to get her um, to think that she's going to be able to get some sort of contact with her her boyfriend and her family but she's probably conditioned to do that this is probably not something she's ever challenged before it's probably how she was raised and this is just natural for her to think that of course i'm going to go and and contact my my boyfriend and my family members and it's not exactly fault 
to be conditioned to believe this is normal. But she's found this guy who is really manipulating her. So it is his fault what he's doing to her. But I mean, if it wasn't him, it'd be another psychic. But they'd probably be cold reading her and without Googling her. And so they would just be doing platitudes of this and that and the other. Whether she gets anything out of it or not, I don't know. And if this woman was to see this video or, um, well, she'd be the only one who would know it was her because I'm not giving anything else away. I'm not saying where she lives or anything like that. And it's, you know, the woman who was before this Angela, when Thomas John read off the names Ronald, Matilda, and Teresa, another woman in this room of 100 people said, oh, those are my family members. And she said, you know, like my my sister's name is Matilda. My my dad's name, my dad, my mom, mom's name is, you know, she she had family members that related to him. So it's not uncommon to have names, um, throwing out three names with all the people in your life. It's likely to have some of them hit. So in this case. I, I guess to sum it up, there's a lot, in, I, a lot of my videos, I'll say what is missing. And when it's Thomas John, I don't usually say what is missing because he's a hot reader. It's the cold readers that are usually missing something. In his case, I think he's missing empathy. But these people are buying reading with him and they're not looking for empathy. They're looking, I mean, Sylvia Brown was one of the most unempathetic people I've ever seen in my entire life. And, and people would say, I love you, Sylvia. I love you so much. And she'd say, I love you too. <laughs> it's just creepy, you know. But if you really could con contact, have contact with the dead, I don't know. Maybe you would be just be this unsympathetic person and just like, okay, yeah, well, next. <laughs> I'm ready for you to go. Okay, hurry up next. There's somebody else trying to get through. Okay, next, you know. Maybe that would be your attitude. So I don't know. I mean, I've never found anybody who could communicate with the dead. So I don't know what the what it would really be like if it is possible. So I hope you found this interesting. I'm curious if anybody comes up with more than 11 questions. I don't want to have to watch this thing again, you guys. Um, <laughs> I have a bunch more I can do out of this gallery reading. So far we have, uh, I've done two, this is the second one, and I don't, I just don't know where I'm going to go with this. There's so many other things that people keep bringing up to me and um, comments and so on. So let's end this here. If you have any other comments or, hey, I love, I love, love, love um, to have um, you to send me your personal um, readings audio or video i can make it so that nobody knows it's you if you want me to or we could have a do an interview and talk about it that way i find those so interesting to break it down i don't care who the psychic is but i find it really interesting when people bring these to my attention and say this is this is the real deal and they bring it to you and then they say, oh, I haven't listened to it in a while. Oh, I it wasn't what I remembered correctly. <laughs> that kind of thing. It's, it really is how the memory works. A lot of psychology in this. You guys, I'm serious. Somebody should be somebody should be uh, doing their Ph.D. on this kind of thing because it's it's really interesting to me. So I and you're here listening. So thank you guys for making it all the way to the end. Like I said. Please like, please share, please subscribe. I'm doing this because I enjoy it and because you guys are watching and you are letting me know what you like and don't like. And I'm changing as I go. Thanks, everybody.